buddy. Oh, hey. Great work. Oops, Here you go. Oh, you earned it. Here. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, got <laughs> it. Sweet. Cool. World's greatest brewer participant? You earned it, buddy. That's you, man. Congratulations. <laughs> If you've been to a brewery tasting room recently, you may have noticed some awards on the walls. That's right, there are literally hundreds of regional competitions around the US that award beers in various style categories. And these accolades are a great source of pride for craft brewers. That's right. However, if you ask most American brewers which distinction they would most like to receive, chances are you'll only get two answers. A medal at the World Beer Cup or a medal at the Great American Beer Festival in Denver, Colorado. In 1859, Colorado's first brewery was formed right here in the city of Denver. It was called Rocky Mountain Brewery. For a good while, it was the largest brewery between San Francisco and St. Louis. In 1979, Colorado's first craft brew was formed, Boulder Beer, and today there's hundreds. Coors, which is obviously a world-renowned name in beer now, was also formed here in Colorado in 1873. Fast forward 100 years or so to the 1970s and you'll find a man named Charlie Papazian throwing beer and steer parties in the foothills of Boulder, Colorado. These parties were sort of an informal early version of the Great American Beer Festival, I guess you could say, which Charlie also founded, in addition to the World Beer Cup, the American Homebrewers Association, and so much more, but it all kind of happened here in this state. The point is, when you talk about American beer history, it's pretty impossible to ignore Colorado or Charlie for that matter. The Great American Beer Festival, or GABF as most people call it, is a yearly beer festival and competition meant to find the absolute best American beers of every different style. Each year, credentialed experts judge beers in nearly 100 distinct categories, and the winners are announced in a formal awards ceremony, the largest of its kind in the world. Now, as I said before, there's also a beer festival portion of GABF, and the festival itself is also one of the largest in the world. Ticket holders can sample thousands of different beers from over 800 different American breweries. The first GABF was held in 1982, and less than 1,000 people showed up, and in 2017, 60,000 people came to the city of Denver to attend this festival. 60,000 people, including myself, Aaron, and our associate producers, Alex and Addison, who brew at Culture Brewing in San Diego County. In 2017, they entered four different beers in various categories in hopes of winning a medal, and the owners of Culture saw fit to send them out to Denver on the company dime. So, naturally, I tagged along and tried to get as much free beer as possible. On Thursday morning, we headed over to Avery in Boulder for a private brewer's lunch. After eating, we ran into a nice young man named Carl who gave us a private tour of the facility. Scolding me for forgetting my PPE, Carl pulled some nails out of barrels and let us sample some wild beer. Not a bad way to spend a Thursday afternoon, if you ask me. We had planned to hit the festival floor after we got back from Avery, but Ska Brewing had invited us to a nearby restaurant for free beer and tapas, and we didn't want to be rude. What's up? Let the party start. Our friend Paul Segura was in a particularly good mood Thursday night because he was finished with beer judging for GABF, which meant his strict diet was over. As one of the beer judges for the 2017 competition, Paul abstained from beer, coffee, and all spicy and flavorful foods for many days leading up to the beer judging in order to keep his judge's palate sharp. All right, we're getting, it. we're getting in the groove of it. All right. Let's do one more. At GABF, the position of beer judge is highly esteemed, very sought after, and extremely important to the reputation of the awards. So the standards for who is allowed to judge is quite high, with all judges having bona fide industry certifications and or many years of experience like Paul. But with judging complete, it was time to hit the festival floor. So first thing Friday morning, we got on the bus and drove 65 miles away from GABF to Colorado's largest craft brewery, New Belgium, for a private tour. Located in Fort Collins, Colorado, with another production facility in North Carolina, New Belgium is the fourth largest craft brewery in the entire country, producing about a million barrels of beer annually. 
Straight away, a Broncos fan named Ben explained some of the technical aspects of brewing at New Belgium's huge facility. We're basically just making the, the whole brewery run bigger, better, faster, stronger. It all starts with our recipe manager. We'll basically select what recipe we want. That'll populate the malt layers, which then will carry the recipe through the whole system all the way to packaging. So it's kind of nice that it eliminates any errors when we're slamming brews through here. We basically, uh, every two hours I'm mashing in. Are you the one brewing today? Uh, in Brewhouse 2 I am. Oh, okay, so, cool. Brewhouse 2 does 240 hectoliter knockouts. Brewhouse 1 does 120 hectoliter knockouts. So we're, we're both pushing out about four brews per shift. We do have a little bit of a different oil system in there. We have the Merlin, but as you can see illustrated here, we have, it's basically just a big cone. And because it's such a huge surface area and you're just rolling that wort over it, it's a lot more energy efficient. So it heats the, the wort up a lot more quickly. The cool thing about the Merlin is that we recover the vapor, we pump that back to our energy storage tank, and then we use that to heat wort on the way to the kettle. Yeah, that's the rundown of the brew house. I can keep talking, but you'll still be here like an hour later. <laughs> ben had to get back to brewing, so a lovely young woman named Tara took over the tour, poured us a round of fat tire, and proceeded to show us the rest of New Belgium. Our favorite part was, of course, drinking wild beer from the enormous fooder program. If you've seen our Haze Craze episode from season three, you may recognize some of these fooders as identical to Bearded Iris's 65-year-old Hungarian oak vessels in Nashville. Just to refresh your memory, a fooder is basically a wooden fermenter meant for wine, but if you know what you're doing, you can make some really interesting beers with them. And New Belgium definitely knows what they're doing. The ever-expanding collection of fooders now encompasses over 60 tanks, not including the smaller wooden vessels. Oh my tight, tight. God. Oh, it's so but tiny barrels aside, they're a massive brewery. Their yeast room alone is larger than some entire brew houses. Their bottling line is the size of a grocery store. <laughs> get this big sort of lose their soul along the way, become super corporate, and forget how to have fun. New Belgium installed a slide in their brew house, and they have a traveling bicycle party called Tour de Fat. And the Tour de Fat Tour Festival de Fat. is built off of the fact it's the opposite of Tour de France, because you're riding fat tire bike, drinking beer in a costume slowly. <laughs> that thing they do. I can do that. <laughs> the only reason I bought a bike in college was to do the Tour de Fat. <laughs> It's not sustainable, and uh, that's our whole philosophy. Well, it's definitely fun, but the most impressive thing to me is that despite its large size, New Belgium isn't owned by some giant conglomerate or an indifferent group of investors. The owners of New Belgium are the folks who work for New Belgium. The entire company is 100% employee owned and operated. So I am 499th employee of New Belgium. I got hired June 2nd, 2014, and now I'm 823rd, you know, of an owner here. So that's how rapidly we grew with national status that we got in April, as well as Asheville coming online. And that's what changes you as employee here. You know, we're huge. We're a big brewery, but I'm an owner of it. I'm one of 823 owners of New Belgium, and uh, I own my shit every day. And uh, that changes nice. you as a human, so. Cheers to that. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to that indeed. Power to the people. Employee ownership is one of the best things we've seen an independent craft brewery do, and we're very enthused to have had the opportunity to feature New Belgium in this episode, as they've been a beer industry leader in this regard. Here in San Diego County, our friends at Modern Times Beer have followed suit, making their brewery 30% employee owned. For more info on that, you can check out our Modern Times episode earlier this season with Morgan Tenwick. Don't I'm really up. interesting, so that's a great, great call on your part. Yeah. As for Colorado, there is much more to our adventures with Alex and Addison at GABF, but unfortunately, we have to end the program here. Don't miss the thrilling conclusion of our two-part GABF episode when we actually go to GABF to see the festival and awards ceremony. I'm Tom, and we'll see you next time on What's on Draft. Cheers.